the title of this video is we moved into our new place, right? And um, we just want to tell you guys how excited we are, you know what I'm saying? And what's to come and a little bit about our, our journey and getting back on our feet, you know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, first of all, I'm gonna start off by shout out Dinesia. We love you, the kids have been watching our videos. Oh yeah. And thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I just have a tip for you guys. Enjoy the moment because it goes by so fast. Yeah, like, facts. Like, like in our show that we were watching, one of the characters said, if you're too busy focusing, oops, sorry, Junior, too busy, what's up with the eating? The I gave him that. Okay, whatever. If you're too busy focusing on the future, you'll miss the moment. Right. And we were only at my sister's for, well, not only, but um, for six months and some change. And it's like one day we woke up and we were there. Next day we woke up and we were gone. Right. And it went by so fast and we have so many memories there. And it was just so fun being there and being with my sister and being with the kids, getting to know them. Yeah. And I just love you, sister. Like, I already told her that we were so grateful and appreciative of us or of her, you know, letting us stay there and um, the resources we had, like being able to use her car to get to and from work. And right. It, to go grocery shopping, you know, stuff like that, to run errands. And the weather was beautiful out there. <laughs> right, right. And um, were you done with your thought? Oh, you're good. I was just about to say, so I'm not going to make this video negative, right? I'm going to try not to make it negative because me and her had talked about making this video before. And I don't want to shine light on the negative stuff. I want to shine light on, on all of the positive things, right? So a quick backstory for those that didn't know, um, the reason why we ended up having to live with our sister in the first place is because we were kicked out of our last situation, right? Um, our last situation was actually my family. So we got kicked out of the house with them and we ended up having to drive, or first of all, move all of our stuff into storage and then drive all the way to San Diego, California because we had no place to stay. Um, we were in the hotel or motel. We were in a motel for like one day though. Yeah. Yeah, so... We weren't out of, we don't, don't feel sorry for us because like we're, we're hustlers, you know what I'm saying? I'm definitely a hustler. I'm going to make something happen. Um, so we weren't out on the streets and nothing like that too long. Literally after that happened, we were gone like in what, a day or two. So oh, wow. yeah. yeah, so when we had got kicked out of that last situation, got us a rental car and we were gone to San Diego, literally within the span of one or two days. So. We lived in a motel for one day with our little junior, and then we got up out of Dodge. You know what I'm saying? We actually have fun at that motel now we that did. you say that. Yeah. I <laughs> wish I, I'm not going to lie. Stop <laughs> saying that. I wish I would have, like, kind of filmed that because what fun is it to, like, create these videos when we're only showing you guys all of our ups? Like, nah. -uh. I like showing. I, I wouldn't. I'm, I'm not going to actually <laughs> film nothing like that, but I'm just saying, like, it would have been cool just to kind of, like, show where we were then. And show you guys where we were or where we are currently at right now. They know how we where we were at. We did the video addressing recent drama. We I was yeah. looking rough. My hair was scruffy. Like we were upset. Like we're definitely not in that headspace anymore. Right. Like they they seen us when we make that made that video. Like how upset yeah. we were and stuff. And that was like, the, mind you, we didn't really have too much time to process all of that. We yeah. were just on the move, like, trying to hustle, make sure our son had a place to live. Like, we were just on the move. Like, we got to get this motel. We got to find some place. We got to get to this And storage. I enjoyed that, too. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I'm going to talk, I'm going to touch a little bit about that as well. Just, like, the growth factor in all of this, y'all. Um, so, like I was saying, we ended up driving all the way down to San Diego because we didn't have no place to go. And luckily, her sister came through for her. Or for us. Her sister was like, you know what? I'm in the military right now because her sister is in the military. For those that didn't know, San Diego is like the naval base. It's like the naval base of the nation. One of the naval ba uh, naval bases of the nation that anyone that's in the Navy like most likely will get transferred to out of camp, right? So she was like, bro, I got an extra room. I got a three-bedroom house. I got an extra room. You guys can come down here and figure it out. So we got us a rental car. Uh, we put all of our shit in storage and we was outro and we've been paying for that storage for what six plus months oh yeah and, yeah and um to my sister and the kids like shout out to you guys for being appreciative for everything that we were doing 
Like, yeah. there's nothing better than like that feeling of feeling like you're doing stuff for people that's actually appreciating it. The cleaning, the groceries, the, right? Everything I'll that we get were. To that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just kind of want to take them down a little backstory. My bad. Oh, yep. Yeah. Backstory. Continue. So, um, yeah, y'all, we ended up <laughs> we moved to San Diego. And I'm not even gonna lie, like I'm a grown man, so I'm not trying to sound like sexy or something like that, but the whole idea of like living with another, putting my livelihood in another woman's hands, another woman being her sister, from the get go, I was very uncomfortable. Um, and even prior to me moving to my family's house, I was kind of suspicious about that. Like, I, if she can tell you right then and there, like, I did not want to, <coughs> ooh, my bad. She could tell you I didn't want to live with anybody. I actually was happy, very happy in the situation that we were in before um, we even moved with anybody. But the only reason, to take you guys a little back, we decided to move with somebody was to save money. You know, we weren't doing what we were supposed to be doing financially. I take accountability for that. And that led to us having to make a choice. We either stay where we currently was and have all the burden be placed on me because at the time she was pregnant. She hadn't had Junior yet. I was like eight, almost nine months. Yeah, and she hadn't worked enough to be getting paid leave. So at the time I was doing the gig economy, which is DoorDash, Uber Eats, and any other gig app out there. And I was making a good amount of money, but something bad had happened with that whole little genre of making money, the independent contractor gigs, that led to my income going from like, $3,500 to $4,000 a month to barely making $900 a month. It was really bad. And I was really stressed. And in retrospect, I could have went to go, I could have went and got a job, but I didn't want to do that at the time. Like I was so used to making money for myself and being my own boss that it was very hard for me to just to go back to the, the corporate grind. You know what I'm saying? I don't think like that now because now I think the way I think now and the way she think now is like, bro, when we got to do something, we got to make it happen. We got to do what it is that we got to do. Yeah, but I, I also like, like right. we have our son now and we know like after he, we experienced like the newborn, we've experienced it all and we know how it was like just having him. Yeah. So imagine you at that time just working two jobs or doing whatever, like working slave hours. And then me, I just gave birth and I'm there with you and you're working all day, right. every day to provide or to, yeah, to provide, pay the rent and whatnot. That would have been a lot. And our rent was 1400 and it would have been without my help, you know? And so I didn't want you to be in that situation. I knew, I know you would go out there and hustle cause you're a hustler and you'll do yeah. whatever you have to do to get it done. But I feel like that's what family is for sometimes when you're right. struggling or you're down or whatever like I would do the same we would do the same if our family needed help like we would help them out for the time being and it was only gonna be oh it was temporary <laughs> yeah like um so we had made a decision to move out of our place and move with family to save some money and to like lessen the burden on us and like long story short it didn't work out you know to what I'm saying others out, you, yeah to, and to help others out as well mm -hmm. it didn't work out we ended up having to move to San Diego with her sister, and it was it was amazing, bro. Like going out there and meeting her sister. Uh, like fun fact, I've known her for a very long time. Like we went to high school and everything together. And prior to that, our families knew each other. You know what I'm saying? So her sister, I knew her sister as well. Like her sister went to high school with. We all went to high school together. But I didn't know her sister like that. Not enough to be living with her. You know what I'm saying? Her two other kids. But I'm going out there, it was really, really cool. Going out there, getting to know you getting to know her sister on a different level, getting to know her, her nieces, beautiful kids. <laughs> and I really enjoyed my time, like just being in California. I never thought in a million years that I would live in California. It being sunny every single day, y'all. We was out there for months and it didn't rain once. Yeah. Unlike what we're looking at right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? I miss the rain. I miss the rain as well. Every but. day. It, we're talking it was sunny every day. Every and day. We were there at the height. We got out there late April and then we we experienced the whole summer out there. So right. it was like in the 80s, 90s, and then it started to cool off. But even when it did cool off, it was still warm still outside. Still warm. And I see why people move to Cali. It's sunny all the time. Beaches. Yeah. The conveniency out there, everything is out there. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, we'll make a wrong turn, and here we are in a different, what seemed like, world. You know what I'm saying? Different 
Huh? We did some shit out there. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff. We like did. We, we went to LA, we went to Melrose, like it was just yeah. it was a we turned a bad situation into a good one. And I'm so grateful mm. that we experienced that because I'm not gonna lie, I grew so much since being out there. Like I I I really am the type of person now that if I'm in a predicament, I know how to get myself out, I know how to get my mm. family out of that, that situation. Oh. And I'm truly willing to do whatever it, it, whatever it takes. I never understood when I would hear men say stuff like, "Bro, if it if it came to me having to provide for my family, I would mop floors." You know, you hear men say that a lot, and I'm I never understood that. I'm like, "Bro, mop floors." I'm. It was that pride, you know. What I'm saying that ego, but yeah. now I have no ego and I have no pride. Like when it comes to me doing what I have to do for myself, I don't care if I got to do three jobs or my family. I'm going to do what it is I have to do. And that's exactly what me and her did when we got we got to California. You know, we told ourselves that we were going to stay there until January 2025. And we got up out of there a few months before then. Um, we went down there, got jobs that we didn't really like. Uh, sure did it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we were driving like 25 miles. Thank God that her sister had an extra car or a car that she allowed us to use. You know, so we can get back and forth to work because for those that didn't know, California job market is trash. Yeah. Like, it's so trash out there. It's very hard to get a job out there, let alone a good paying job. You know what I'm saying? If you want to move to California and you ain't rich or you don't got a business already, you better be prepared to make anywhere between $17.95 an hour to $19.95. You ain't making over $20 an hour out there unless you are in the fast food industry, <laughs> which is stupid as hell in and of itself. Mm -hmm. But we used to be waking up at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning, y'all, going to work, going to a job that we hate, and doing that for months on end. And then I got the bright idea to, like, okay, bro, I need to make more money so we can save. So I decided to get two jobs. So I worked at Whole Foods, and then I worked at Nordstrom. I'm talking about 12-hour days. It didn't last long, but I still did it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, what happened? I got fired. <laughs> This is what happened, y'all. So I would work from 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Nordstrom, right? And then from there, I would write. No, let me give you guys a whole backstory. This is going to be a long video. So for those who really mess with us, bear with us. You know what I'm saying? Because I got a lot to say and she got a lot to say. So I would wake up at around, I'll say, 4.30 a.m. And then from 4.30 a.m., I would ride my scooter to the train station, the 8th Street train station in San Diego. For those from San Diego, you know what the 8th Street train station is, right? Because the train came at 5 a.m., right? No, I would wake up at 5 a.m., and then I will ride my scooter to the train station to get there by 5.30 a.m. because 5.30 a.m. is when the, when the first train came. Then I would hop on that train, ride a whole hour. It took a, it took a whole hour to get from... National City, where we lived at, all the way to La Jolla, California, where I worked at, which was Nordstrom, right? I arrived there around 6 a.m. because that's when my shift started. From 6 a.m. all the way to 2 p.m., that would be my shift. After that, I will have to get my scooter, ride 15, anywhere between 12 and 15 miles from La Jolla, California, where Nordstrom was, all the way to Del Mar, California, where the Whole Foods was, right? And clock in for a four-hour shift, four to five-hour shift. That would be around like anywhere between 3 or 4 p.m. And then after that was over, I would have to ride 15 miles back to that train station in La Jolla, California. Hop on that train, ride another hour all the way back home to National City. After I got to National Sh City, ride an additional t like six to seven miles just to get back home. I would do that every single day, y'all. So one day... I was tired as hell, you know, between working the first job, absorbing all those dips and all that vibration when you're riding your scooter, doing all that stuff. I was dead one day. So I found myself in the break room at Whole Foods. I just sat down one day, y'all, and I couldn't get up. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I literally just sat down. I was just like, next thing I know, I'm sitting down for about 45 minutes. No, next thing I know, I sat down for like 15 minutes. I try to get up in my, I was so not there mentally. I'm like, bro, next thing I know, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm on that, I'm on that couch for 45 minutes. 
So in the four hour shift, I was a shopper, for instance, a shopper, uh, an e-commerce shopper. So those are the people that go around when a, uh, when an order comes in, when you order from like Amazon Fresh or something like that, or like WholeFoods.com or whatever it may be, an online order, we are the ones that go shop those orders and make sure that everything is intact so that the Amazon Flex drivers can pick them up and deliver them to you guys' doorsteps. So I'll say out of four hours, I only delivered two orders. Or uh, shop two. I only shopped two orders. Metrics was horrible. Probably the worst they've ever been in the whole company. And but then people are slaves. I'm yeah. like, bro, at that time, I was <clears throat> just over it, y'all. Like, I'm like, bro, like, F this job. You know what I'm saying? And I always teach her. I've been telling her since we got together, always have two of everything. Because when you have <clears throat> two of something, when you have multiples of something, you're not... You don't operate from a scare a scarcity mindset. You like, oh, you're not thinking, oh, if I lose this job, my whole world is over. Because you already have something to replace that. Right. Just in case it happens. So when I got fired from Whole Foods, I'm like, first of all, this is the lowest paying job I have. You guys are paying me seventeen dollars <laughs> an hour. So I didn't care about that. Uh second of all, this job is like damn near thirty miles away from where I live. So that's inconvenient already. You know what I'm saying? Um <laughs> Fourth, fourth of all, I just are yeah, I just didn't like that job. You know what I'm saying? But Same. it it served its purpose. It served its purpose, and <clears throat> that's what I had to do. What about you? You know that's crazy. I see why. Remember, we always used to say like when one of my coworkers would drive an hour to get to work, and then other coworkers would like want sh- uh, one yeah, of them. Uh, yeah, it was coming from Chula Vista. There were people, and then the other dude that looks like he's Islander, but he's Mexican, he was coming from, uh, like, where we were coming from to get there. There were people coming from Mexico, because you know San Diego is right by Mexico, right? Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. There Tijuana. Was pe- there was people coming from Tijuana to Del Mar, California. If you guys don't know how far that is, put it in Google. Type in Tijuana, Mexico, to Del Mar, California, and yeah. then say to yourself, damn, the commute there versus the commute back, that's like close to 100 miles a day. Like, we just wasn't on that type of time, y'all. But again, we just have to do what we had have to do. Um, yeah, I see why people, now it makes sense why people were driving like that far. Yeah. Because that the job market, like you said, they were holding on to that job because of their pay. No job. because they felt like, what other job am I going to find? So we actually were pretty blessed to only be driving, what, 20, or I think 22, 25 miles, something like that. I was just but, shocked on how, like, at how they really expect for people to live in California. Like, it live, <laughs> live in California making $17 an hour, bro. If you are planning to move to California, if you are not in a high corporate position where you're making like at minimum six figures, because even six figures ain't really a lot of money nowadays. But if you're not at minimum making six figures a year living in California, I don't know how you're really going to have a high quality of life. Give it back to him. He can have that. He's putting that whole thing in his mouth. Yeah, but that's not... Here. I don't really understand how people are surviving in California. Not to mention, it was just too liberal for me out there. California, for what it's worth, it's a beautiful place, but it's just not a place I will ever want to raise my kids in. It's not a place I will ever want to settle in. California is exactly what it what it should be. Just a, a state that you go to during the summertime, maybe go to Disneyland, Magic Mountain, Knott's Berry Forum, maybe go do a little shopping, go to Hollywood Boulevard, but all like other than living there, Every single day of my life, I can't do it. I don't want to do that, no. Yeah, we went to um, we went to uh, Solana Beach, which is a popular yeah. beach. I actually got to see the dolphins. That was really cool. Papa Bear yeah. was at work. Me and Junior got to see the dolphins. Um, where else did we go? We went to La Jolla Beach. Was that when we were eating that uh, Dave's? We went to Dave's, yeah, too. Yeah, we went to uh, La Jolla Beach. Um, and it's so funny because I'll be looking on Instagram. I'll be like... Like through my feed, sometimes I'll see people showing these places that I used to just pass on the normal. Mm. Like I think that's La Jolla Beach. It's right before you get to UC San Diego, which is University of San Diego. Mm-hmm. And um, that was my route going to work. I will get off of work from working at Nordstrom, and then I will ride from Nordstrom all the way down to uh, Del Mar. And in order for me to do that, I would 
have to um pass that beach. So I'm gonna miss the beaches, and they got some real beaches down there. Beautiful beaches. Other than San, other than Miami, I've never seen any better beach than the ones that are in California. Yeah, the beaches were beautiful. We went to L.A. We went to some famous malls, the Grove. The Grove, um, Topanga. Topanga, yeah. I seen D.L. Hughley. Like, we was in, um, <laughs> we had went to Topanga Mall. And for those that don't know where Topanga Mall is, it's like on the outskirts of Calabasas. Topanga Mall is like right before you get to Calabasas. So naturally, if you go there enough times, you're going to see a lot of celebrities shop there. And um, she was already in the car, but as I was exiting the building, I had seen D.L. walk in there. You know, I know who D.L. Hughley is. He had pulled up in like an all-black Uber, XL Uber. And I was like, I'm not like one of them fanboys, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm kind of like, I can get what you got. Like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? You're right. human just like me. Right. So I was talking to him like I knew him. I said, what's going on, D.L.? He was like, how you doing, man? I was like, I'm blessed. And walked straight up out of there. No <laughs> autographs, none of that. You know what I'm saying? And you can, that's what that's the type of person I am, but California was a move. Um, what else? Um, living with her sister was, I'm not going to lie, it had, it had pros and cons. Uh, mostly pros, but when I say cons, I don't mean bad things. I just mean like it was kind of hard up for us adjusting with living with other people. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Especially after everything that we have been through right yeah. before that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I found myself, y'all, kind of going through a small dose of depression. Mm. Like even her sister would be asking her sometimes, like, "Dang, why? Like, you know, why every time we have like family time or something, he seemed to be going upstairs." I did a lot of that. Like I'll just be going upstairs because not only am I going through all of this stuff, you know, I'm going through all this stuff as a new father. Who wants to be the best father as he that he can be? Who wants to provide for himself, his child, and his family? And I'm 29 years old, and this is where I'm at in my life, living with somebody else. My pockets ain't looking right. Like this is the last place. We all have an early midlife crisis where we had this big picture of where we wanted to be when we were graduating high school, or even when we were two years or so removed out of high school. And then as time goes on, because it will go on, you start looking back at your life like, man, when I was young and up and growing up, bro, I, I never thought I would be, how did I get here? You ever ask yourself that question before, y'all? Like, how in the world did I get here? So that made me depressed. But like I would tell our son when he gets older, don't ever get, don't, it's okay to be depressed. It's okay to be sad, but don't ever stay there. You know, you got to get your ass up. You got to become accountable for where your life is. And you got to formulate a plan to get yourself up out of that. And that's exactly what I did. You know, it wasn't we easy. Did, yep. That's Yeah, that's what she did. But I'm talking about as a man. No, I said so we did. But yeah, no, I hear um, that. Even her, she would have to bear the burden of me, like, being, like, upset and being mean and cranky. Like, she had to, I re appreciate her for doing that a lot because it was a lot of moments where I'm probably, like, where she was probably like, bro, why are you always so angry? Thank you for like, putting, yeah. yeah she would be the one that's always positive or trying to be positive, even though she should be negative. And I'm just the type of person, bro, sometimes when I'm angry, I don't get sad. I just get angry. You know, and she would be like that. Like, bro, why are you always so angry? I mean, we're doing what we can to get up out of this situation. <laughs> she would say that a lot. And, you know, sometimes I would have to talk to, like, my only man best friend because, you know, sometimes as a man, we... Like, women don't understand what we are internally feeling as a man, so... And they also don't always express yeah, we it, don't. which is, I mean, which is fine, but, yeah, uh, we, we're not mind readers, so... Even sometimes when we do express it, like, uh, there's some things that women are going to choose to talk to other women about because we don't understand it. Like, for instance... Um, Postpartum, postpartum depression. depression, right? Women stuff like I'm not gonna come to you. Oh, I started my period today. Well, yeah. actually, yeah, but I'm not gonna go into detail about yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna choose to talk to a woman about your body, your body, and how you're feeling about your recovery after pushing out a baby. Yeah. You know, us dudes, I'm like, oh, it's time to get back to work. You already had that baby. You know what I'm saying? But a woman's gonna be like, bro, like our bodies just don't snap back how they how they was before we had a baby. Like it takes a while. Like us dudes were more logical than emotional, you know what I'm saying? So 
I appreciate her for like holding me down in my low moments because there were a lot of low moments. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. I mean, we both were, we were both, um, we both had some low moments and like, even now, like, even though we look happy and we are happy and, you know, we've, we've, you know, taken accountability for a while because we talked about that too, accountability. How did we get in this predicament in the first place? Yeah. And he mentioned that a little bit, like, earlier in the video, like, financially, we weren't making the best choices. Like, and when I say that, I don't mean like, oh, we were splurging, we were, oh, like, nah. we just ended up in a situation, you know, and... We had two choices. We could have kept struggling to pay our rent and whatnot. And I was pregnant, about to give birth, being on leave from work, wouldn't have been making money. He would have been working all day. Like we could have been struggling or we could have went to family like we did and got some, not not assistance, but a place to live and a peace of mind help, while, we're, yeah. Yeah, while we're trying to save up and, you know, get to our next, you know, yeah. endeavor in life. And so, <clears throat> this little boy getting big, y'all. This little boy is just squirming like a little worm and right. just doing the most. But you yeah, so. you asked me how my experience went, um, or like at work. I actually quit that job recently. Yeah, we both pretty much was out of there. <laughs> yeah, I don't mess with Whole Foods. They're not a good company. Um, Give them a backstory. Um, pretty much my um, transfer process when I was trying to transfer my job, um, they were giving me a hard time. They were lying. Um, I tried to, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, want me, you want me to give, want me to break it down for them? No, basically. All right. You you can break it down, but I I just didn't want to mention certain things. I won't. They was on some bullshit. Let's just say that like I've never had a company in my life. Because we did it the right way, y'all. Um, first of all, another thing I learned, another thing we learned is that, you know, you can do everything virtually nowadays, y'all. Don't ever think that you are confined to one area in this nation. This is a beautiful country that we all, that we can live wherever we see fit. So you are not confined to one place in this country. And with that being said, you know, I didn't know that you can live in another state and and literally call another state that you're planning on moving to, have for an apartment, fill out an apartment application, have them run your credit, and send pay stubs from a like you can literally find a new place to live while you're while still staying in another state, right? If you live in Arizona and you want to move to New York, there's ways to do that. You can start calling apartment complex, apart, yeah, apartment buildings. You can um, start having, like, do, you know, fill out an apartment application. You can transfer your job down there so that prior, prior to you moving down there, you have a source of income. So that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that our jobs were transferable strategically so that when we move down here, we, didn't, we, we wouldn't just be moving down here with no source of income. So when we move down here, we have jobs or we wanted to have our jobs. So that's what she was trying to do with Whole Foods. She was trying to get her job transferred down here so that prior to us moving down here, not only would we have our place, but she would have a source of income. And they was on some bullshit. I'm talking, I had the credentials, the experience, everything. the availability, the position was open, the transfer, everything. I did my part, but they didn't do their part. And I feel like there was some funny business going on, but I already got a new job. So right. like, I'm not even worried about that. And I left that company and I'm glad I left because I didn't like the way that I was being treated anyway. Exactly. And I don't like the way they did me when it came to the transfer process. Talking about they went with other candidates. You went with other candidates, but I have the experience, the the availability, and the work ethic. Plus, I'm internal, which but, means I already work for the company. Right. You never heard of a company going to hire a completely new person rather than hiring their own, a person who's already working for the company. So that's how you know it's some sketchy business. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But my point, our point in saying all of that is that don't ever feel like, don't ever not bust a move because you feel like, this one duck is not in a row. Mm. You go, it's jobs everywhere. You know, we could have been like, oh, this is tripping right now. Um, they're not transferring our job. Let me just stay down here a little longer. No, we told ourselves, you know what? I don't care what happens. We're leaving. Right. We set a day 
a date for us to a deadline for us to get up out of California and it don't matter if we didn't have jobs or not, we were gonna get up out of there and figure it out. And don't be afraid to do that in life. Sometimes in life you just gotta put yourself into action and trust in God, trust in your abilities, trust yourself that you're gonna figure it out. And that's exactly what we did. We got out here and she got another job literally like in the first week of us being here. We've only been here. We got out here Monday. The, yeah. The Monday was Veterans Day, 11th. We left November, Friday, November 8th, and we stopped <coughs> at Grandma's in Oregon. We stayed oh, yeah. the weekend uh -huh. at Grandma's. And, wow, that's crazy. And then we got out to our place on Monday the 11th, and within this whole week, we done done so A much. A lot. <laughs> I got two jobs already. Yeah. Um, I got two jobs already. We got our place. Mm -hmm. We're uh, mm -hmm. we're in a like we're gonna start our our next thing. We're gonna get us a little whip. We're gonna get us some furniture. Yep. We're gonna get us a lot of stuff. But um, we're just getting back into the swing of things. I'm about to start working out again tomorrow. We got we already got uh two gym memberships pending. You know what I'm saying? Um, <coughs> already I went to see my dad too. Took Junior oh, yeah. to his grandpa. We seen we took him to see his or see his her uh, dad, which is his grandpa. That was the um, day after we got here. That literally. is crazy. <laughs> um, I thought it was important for him to meet his great grandmother, which is why we stopped out there before we came out here. Oregon, yeah. Oregon, yeah. Um, we didn't have to go see her, but I thought it was important. You know, I really think it's important that my son know his grandparents and his great grandparents, despite the circumstances. But yep. that's a story for a different day. We'll see how that that morphs itself into existence. But all in all, y'all. Even with this place right here, me and her, like, because I want to move to Miami. You know what I'm saying? So. Miami sled. Yeah, I want to move to Miami. And. I want to move to California. Never. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, never. this whole situation has taught me personally that you can do whatever it is that you want to do if you're willing to put forth the effort. If you're willing to, like, it's no limitations, y'all. Like, you can be down and out, then you can be up again. You know what I'm saying? But. I don't know. It just really taught me that it's all on you. You know, if you want to stay down, you can stay down. We could have easy. We didn't have to leave her sister's house. Her sister's her sister wasn't tripping. You know. Um, yeah, she said we could stay with her. She's yeah getting, getting a new job uh, offer, new job opportunity in Florida. And she was like, "You guys can come with me to yeah. Florida." And then I'm like, "Wow." Yeah. But we, we just naturally like having our own. We don't like being a burden, even though we're not a burden. And people always tell us that. We just like, you know, we're grown. We have a family. Like, we just like having our own space, you know? It was just cool, y'all, being out there with, with, with them and the girls. I feel like I made a good impression on the girls. Aww. You know, um, I love those little girls. There's some really beautiful, like, sweethearted young girls, you know what I'm saying? And. They're growing so fast. Even seeing how fast our child was growing, we got to uh, like we got to see how fast they were growing. And they're in a, they're in a few of these videos. If you ever, if you guys ever want to uh, reference what girls we're talking about, but um, like children are so innocent, and I was just so happy that we got to make those memories with them, and they got to make memories with their cousin. We get to, we got to take pictures and all these different things. When we got out there, y'all, Junior was a, a baby. Three Junior wasn't even months. walking yet when we got out there. Now, this boy is walking and... Where would you put him? Right there. Because <laughs> he keep playing games. Stop touching my camera, please. You want to say hey? All right, get up out of here. <laughs> Junior wasn't even walking when we went to California, y'all. He was a baby. Now, he's like, man, this, this boy is getting big. When Dinesha got back from underway, he was pretty much crawling. Yeah. That was back in, uh, she got back in, uh, I think, August 12th. And the boy was crawling. Yeah, he was crawling. On the verge of crawling, and then he started crawling. But, um. That's crazy. Yeah, we, we've gone through so much. I think I had a phase of postpartum depression as well, like. It was because um, we uh, went out to California, and he was, Junior was three months old at the time, and I was going through my little, you know, back <coughs> pain, and, you know, those moments where I felt overwhelmed, like, I don't do too well with being overwhelmed. Yeah. So, I was having my moments where I was like, because Dinesia was gone as well, so we were taking care of Amina and Ayana at the time, too. So, um, 
it was kind of a lot at times, like doing laundry and cleaning and cooking and junior and this and that. And then my back was hurting too. So I was getting overwhelmed on top of like having to take care of myself, do my hair, do my eyebrows, like do all of this. And, you know, I got overwhelmed. So I was going through like a, a minor, like short postpartum depression phase. And then sometimes I would look at my body and look at my boobs and be like, uh oh, -uh, my boobs is sagging a little bit. And, you know, I love it because it's a part of the process. It's a beautiful thing, giving birth and, and pregnancy and stuff like that. But sometimes I'll have my moments where I'm like, dang, my body has changed forever. And then the pelvic pain too, like that just started like going away. Um, I guess Isha was right when she said, give yourself a year. And, yeah. Yeah. And so I had a little postpartum depression phase. It was, it was, uh, by the grace of God, it wasn't anything major. And, you know, uh, Papa Bear went through his little depression phase as well. And I'm glad that we came out unscathed. Like, right. we I'm did sure good. We, we've been through a lot, and I'm so proud of us. And, like, I'm really happy with where we are now. Like, we have our place. I just had a birthday, got some freaking Ugg boots. Papa Bear got me a MacBook. Oh, like, yeah. his birthday is coming up, and I'm getting him some stuff, too. November 25th, um, we're in a really good, a really good place to be able to buy food for our place, buy appliances, utensils, like yeah. all types of stuff. We're really blessed for what we have. Junior just, we've only been here for not even a week. Tomorrow it'll be a week. Junior's already gotten blessed with a bunch of clothes, yeah. shoes, jackets, yeah. like all types of stuff from my dad's lady and my dad, of course. And so... We've been so blessed. <laughs> yeah, we've been blessed. And granted, like I said, our goal is to get up out of here in a year. Like, we um, we were just, we're, we're just getting our foot, foot, not our foot in the door, but we're getting back on our feet. So, you know, one thing that she uh, has repeated as of lately was um, that she's no longer really scared to live in a different place. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um. Get that ass over here. Like, we're in this little place right here, which is a beautiful place. We love this place. We about to deck it out. We about to do what we're going to do. And we're going to keep growing. We, we This is where we're starting right now. Um, in a year tops, our, we're going we're gonna to keep growing. The place is going to get bigger. The car is going to get fancier. The world job going to get more expensive. The body going to get more in shape. Junior is going to grow. Like, we're going we're gonna to be doing the damn thing. It's, it's going to be like that, you know what I'm saying? And that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Remember you were riding your scooter and your Invisalign fell off? Yeah. <laughs> so much stuff is happening in, in California, bro. It was just... But you know the crazy part, though, y'all? <laughs> now that we're in our own spot and we're just chilling and we've been, like, getting back on our feet, a lot of that stuff is immediately starting to become a blur. Yeah. Like, it's crazy how... You know, one thing I've learned is that the hard time, don't ever get away from that scooter, bruh. One thing I've learned, y'all, is the hard times is what really make you who you are in life. The hard times is what, what those hard times make you resilient. They, the best teacher in life is life in and of itself. You can read a thousand books about life, but unless you actually live and go through life, that's life is the best teacher. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I learned is like life is really it's the it's the best teacher. And I'm grateful for all of our experiences that we experience in life. But where I was going with that is when you're going through something bad, when you're going through your down phase in life, you're not really looking at it like that. You know what I'm saying? You're not really looking at it like, oh, when I come up out of this, I'm going to be better than ever. Some people do. But naturally, if you're a human like I am, <laughs> you're going to be like going through it when you're going through a down phase in your life. And then when you finally get up or when you start to get back on your feet, then you can look back and be like, oh, I'm glad that I experienced that because it made me a stronger individual. But I'm not going to lie. When we were going through what we were going through, I wasn't thinking like that. I was just very mad and angry. You and know what I'm saying? Get, and, and don't get it twisted. Like, we still have our moments because um, you always, re they say you'll forget what people said and you'll forget what people did sometimes, but you'll never forget how they made you feel. Right. Something like that. And so 
don't get it twisted. When we were at our worst, we remember how people treated us. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> and furthermore, I, I just, you know, when Junior gets older and he decides to start his own family and he has his own child, he's going to be very, very scared, right? Because he's a, he's a new father, you know, Y'all, when you have your own child, one thing I'm learning, or one thing I've learned is that, like, it's like, bro, it's do or die. You know, I've had phases in my life when I was living in my car. You know what I'm saying? I was okay with that because I was chasing my dreams. I was doing what I had to do. But every time I look at that boy, I really think about, like, life or death. Like, whatever we do, this, like, everything we do is for this little human being's survival. You know what I'm saying? And that's scary to think about. This is like, especially if you're a new parent, you've never done this ever in your life. So you're only moving off of survival instincts. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I felt some type of way about that. I would never leave. I would, I don't care what Junior has done to me. Like I would never ever in my life not feel like I have to check up on Junior, especially if he's going through this new phase in his life. You know what I'm saying? A, new, a scary phase in his life. So, I don't care. I'll always be there for my son. And that's all I got to say about that. On a positive note, I'm very excited for what's to come. I got so many goals. So many things I'm about to do. For those that don't know, I'm a 90s baby. I'm about to be 30 years old. On the 25th of November. 30 years old. It went fast as hell. Like, never, I always knew, I'm not a street guy, you know what I'm saying? So I always knew I would make it to 21. I always knew that I would live a long, God willing, good life. But the fact that I'm put, I'm about to be 30 years old, that's wild to me. Instead of dirty 30, can we say sturdy 30? <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing though, y'all. I'm excited going into this new phase of my life because, you know, my 20s, I literally I literally did what, like everything in my 20s. I'm not trying to say party and none of that other bullshit that you guys made me think. I never was into like the partying. I, I went through a little phase, but that was in my teenage years. But I'm talking about as far as chasing my dreams and starting businesses and moving to different states and meeting new people and seeing different cultures and seeing how people do things all around the world, getting out of my bubble, you know what I'm saying, living life. I really felt like I did that in... I tried things. I tried things I I liked. I tried things I didn't like. I explored every avenue that I could explore in my 20s to figure out who I am as a person, what I enjoy doing as a person, and what I want for my life. And now that I've done that, as I'm embarking in this next phase of my life, I know exactly down to a pin, like down, bruh. Oh! He be biting people. <laughs> I know exactly what I want to do, y'all. Quit like, biting. Know exactly what I want to do with my life. I know exactly what I want for my family. I know exactly what I want for my child. Now it's time to go out there and go get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Quit. that's what I'm doing right now, y'all. Right. This boy be biting. He bit me the other day. He bit my nipple the other day. Only thing I gotta <laughs> say is she woke up to him crying. I woke. <laughs> you pinched him. That no, boy. I woke up. It was you guys know I love me my I love me some sleep. I've always been like that. And I'll do whatever I can or need to do to get some good sleep. So I was sleeping, these two were in the room effing off. And you know, you know when you're sleeping, your sleep keeps getting interrupted, so that's what was happening. Junior was crawling on my head and stepping on me and doing all types of stuff. So I finally got into a decent sleep. And I wake up to Junior screaming to the top of his lungs. I woke up. I said, what is going on? And <laughs> Papa Bear said, he just oh. bit me. <laughs> just biting people. Yeah. So, yeah. And what happened yeah. after he bit you? He took his ass to sleep. <laughs> you beast. <laughs> he be trying to, he, he gets to the age, y'all, where he, he know he understands logic. You know what I'm saying? He, he understands that. When daddy tells him to stop messing with that plug, he's going to associate a flicking with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's to that age now. And he's also to the age to know that mommy ain't going to flick me if I keep messing with this drawer or something. She's just going to keep telling me to stop. And I'm going to keep doing it over and over and over. 
So he be getting over on her already. But That's my boy. I'm gonna push over. Mm -mm. There's the thumbnail. Where? There it is. <laughs> yeah, he um, it's kind of annoying. He thinks that every time I eat something, he is entitled to get what I eat. He sits in front of me and said, <clears throat> grunting and screaming, and then he'll start crying to the top of his lungs. He does not do that with his dad, mm -mm. and I be giving in every time. I don't play that stuff. I be trying to tell her. We have went to go see her grandparents the other day, and her grandparent or her her, her uh, granddad was like, every time Junior would start crying, he'd be like, "Don't pick that boy up. Leave him there." <laughs> and I was like, "See, I thought I was like that's men for you. Men be really doing that. Like that was that was so beautiful, y'all. Seeing, I got a couple of pictures. She got some pictures as well. But seeing him with his great grandmother and his great granddad, that was like." That was very important for me, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's not it's not every day that you get to see stuff like that. You know, I wish my uh, grandmother was still alive, my great grandmother and my grandmother was still alive, because he would definitely have pictures with them as well. Unfortunately, they're gone, so I can't do that. But her granddad, or uh, her great grandfather on her, that's your granddad, right? That would be his great grandfather. Yeah, his great grandfather. Yeah. He passed away at the beginning of this year. Wait. Oh, wait. Fraser. Oh no, that was last year. He passed away November eleventh of. Oh, last year. Last year. Yeah. I wish he could have just held on. Yeah. Because I would have loved for him to meet his great grandchild and take some pictures with them, but Father Time waits for nobody. You know what I'm saying? So. Get lost. You're doing too much. Bye. Yeah, y'all. That's all we gotta say. We in this new place. We. We've been thugging it out until we get some furniture. Living the American dream. We got some food up in there, though. We always going to have some food. Mm -hmm. He got some food. <laughs> we got jobs. And we have our sanity and our happiness. Yep. We're doing good. We're blessed. Sanity and happiness. I'm noticing that I'm doing things that I really wasn't even doing out there. Like, I'm starting to get back into, like, taking pictures and all that. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. I remember, like... Prior to us, when we at the beginning of this year, even last year, y'all, I will I will keep my Polaroid camera with me. I was taking probably hundreds of pictures a week. Yeah. And I asked myself just recently, like, bro, what happened? Like, you enjoy taking pictures. I love photography. I love videography. More importantly, I just love recording moments. You know, I love capturing and freezing moments in time that mean the most to me. But. I noticed when I was in California, I rarely picked up a camera. I did towards the end of us leaving, but it was because I was depressed. I didn't want to do anything. And that day, I think I remember that day because he had the camera and I was so happy that he was taking pictures. I was like, wow, look at you. And I could tell that that meant that he was like overcoming his depression or he was like turning over a new leaf because I noticed he like, he, he takes pictures when he's at his happiest. Like that's something he's passionate about. But Honestly, it's the worst moments that you should take pictures. Right, of. and I'll be thinking about that, but man, mm -hmm. nobody wants. Oh, it's the worst. Mo it's the worst yeah. moment. Let me take a picture. Like I got a few, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I noticed ever since we've been back out here, I've been carrying a camera with me every single day. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I've been taking pictures of this little guy that have been going viral. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so the little celebrity baby. Little celebrity baby. We're almost 10 months in. Can you believe that? 10 yeah. months? Yeah. We're going to do a little nine-month update, too, because we forgot to do that. But he be just doing too much, yo. But her birthday was a few days ago. The 13th. And I feel like us being in our own spot. Um, I had bought her a MacBook, like, last month. It wasn't even for her birthday. I just bought it because <laughs> I had the extra money from working those two jobs. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, you know what? I want to treat her. She's been wanting a MacBook for years now. So I went to go cash out on the MacBook. I had went to, we had went to the Apple store in, uh, at a mall called Fashion Valley, which is the uh, high-end mall of San Diego. And um, we had went to the Apple store. And I was just going up in there acting like I was browsing. Like, hey, man, what's, you know me, I'm a tech, I'm a tech savvy guy. So I know what I'm looking for. I'm not the type of guy that goes into an electronic store and be asking questions because I'm just clueless. I know exactly because I, I do the research. So I went up in there, asked for the, the, uh, the MacBook Air that I was going to get her. 
Would you be quiet? He's trying to get this. You're not getting that. Take this. What P did he say? Take that. Uh -huh. So walked up into the Apple store, y'all, and I was like asking all these questions about this MacBook. And then at the end of me like asking this dude about the MacBook, I was like, "Yeah, get that one." And she looked at me. It was happy. <laughs> I was so happy. I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> she looked at me. It was hella happy that I got her that MacBook. <laughs> but um, I did that, and then for her birthday. Uh, we en she enjoy. I would like to say she enjoyed her birthday. I sure did, and we had cheesecake the other day. That was like my first. Well, I had it, but it was years ago. I had the banana cream cheesecake. It was bomb. I want some more. Right. Um, we went to the cheesecake factory the other day. That was really cool. But yeah, my birthday. Technically, it was like on my birthday it was Junior's birthday because we was up in the North Room. He got. Oh yeah. All types of shoes and clothes and all jackets. I'm talking. Right. On top of the stuff that he got, um, my dad's lady ordered him <coughs> more stuff that day. It was nice. Um, but it was a good day. Yeah, uh, Papa Bear got me these $300 Ugg boots. They are so cute. I love them. And um, I'm really thankful. Yeah, definitely thankful that our pockets is right and they're getting better. Um, I'm getting to my personal training stuff. So I'm about to start another business because I, I love business stuff. That business is about to take off. I know it's gonna take off because when I put my mind in something, it always gets, it takes off. Mm -hmm. um, you know what, y'all? I'm just happy that we're back in our own environment. That the one of the biggest things, the main things I've always enjoyed about our relationship is the spontaneity of it. Meaning like just being spontaneous. Every day with us is different. And we can be doing something that may not be the biggest thing and we'll find fun in it. You know, like walking the city or taking pictures or just doing small things. Like, it's just really fun always having somebody that you can do small things with and still be able to have fun. That's that's one of the things I miss that I feel like we've been doing since being out here. Going to a new grocery store that we've never been to before. You know, like stuff like that. Just busting moves together. Here. He said, yeah. No. Ugh, he you. likes to barge himself at people with that diaper booty. Oh, give me that. You hit me again. Hit me again with that bottle. Them teeth. You say teeth is teeth. All right, that's all I got to say, though. Get your bread up. We out. <laughs> <Get your bread. laughs> I like that. Get your bread up. Peace out, y'all. <laughs>